was this little girl who was admitted um, after brain, she had brain surgery for a, a leak. And when I walked into her room, uh, I was with her mother, her father, her brother. And when the ward round started, it was multidisciplinary team, the surgeon, her primary care doctor, the nurse, the play therapist, and even the housekeeper who was in the room began to get engaged. And the doctor started the rounds by saying to, to her, Jess, what matters to you? And she said, pain. And so he said to the nurse, what time did she get pain medication? And they had a whiteboard in the room. And she said, um, 6 a.m. So the doctor wrote, 10 a.m. will give you more pain medication, probably 2 p.m. And, and he said, next thing that's most important is to get you up and walking today. So they planned 10.30 and 2.30. We'll get you to the playroom. We'll walk you to the end of the hallway. Then he said, today's a good day for you to start eating again. What's your favorite food? And she said, Fruit Loops, which is not a good food, but he wrote Fruit Loops, 12 o'clock. And then the mother said, well, I'll go home and take a shower and a nap here. She plugged that in. And then the father, the same. And then the nurses filled in their daily work. And it was all around what mattered to the, the patient first. And then everybody was on the same team planning together. The same afternoon, I went to visit this guy, uh, my brother-in-law, who has uh, invasive bladder cancer, and he was at another hospital. And the, um, Jess is now going to be a nurse, she told me. <laughs> she sent me a picture. But um, when I went to visit my brother-in-law, it was the exact opposite experience. No, no um, team. Each person came in individually. And the first doctor came in after his, um, he had a urostomy and a uh, colostomy. Um, and said to him, if I were you, I'd give myself a lot of pain medication. He was on an IV pump. That way you can get up and walk, and that way you'll go home sooner. And then the next doctor came in and said, if I were you, I wouldn't take any pain medication because your colostomy won't work, and you won't go home in time. And so Bill said, well, what about the other doctor's opinion? And he said, who is that? Oh, Dr. Bravado, he always says that. And in the United States, the number one cause of dissatisfaction is disrespect among team members. It's gone yeah, from yeah. anything else yeah. to disrespect. They, they, this team didn't have a whiteboard. They had a computer, as you say, that absorbed all the information. And um, the difference in that one day for me in seeing effective ward rounds and the lack thereof was just provo it profoundly changed the way I think about our care. I think we, when we had the meeting yesterday, I showed you the video for those who have not been seeing it. Mm -hmm. so, and, and, and we learned that we should stress that it's not one golden rule how to, to do a ward round. And, and from your stories here, we understand this, that it depends on the context and which country you were, mm -hmm. what kind of facilities we got. We got a wonderful question from India yesterday about this. So it's more like to do the best, really. And, and I've got a wonderful thing, a story which I think of many times, but I think it was from England, they were complaining that, well, we don't have those faci facilities we've got in Sweden. Oh, well. But on the other hand, this man told me about that they, you know, in this room with four or six people, when they were talking to one of them, they left uh, like headphones for the other ones with music on, so they could still preserve the integrity. And I thought that that kind of intervention was just wonderful. It was costless and did do the work. So you can always do something, I used to say. So don't blame the context, don't blame the country, don't blame the politician. Something has to be done, really. So.